Welcome to the Invincible Innovation Show, the podcast for changemakers. Each week, I talk to the most fascinating entrepreneurs and innovation leaders about innovation, strategy, and design. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Invincible Innovation uh, uh, Live Show. Uh, the show is about future of people with tech. I'm Adima Zolkayo, innovation and value creation expert, and I'll be your host. And today I'm so happy to have Katarina Valdenden with me. She is the co-founder and CEO of Inasabi. Hi, Katarina. Hi. Hi. Thanks for having me. Thanks for inviting me. I'm, I'm excited that we get to talk. Yeah, me too. You know, like I thought about our first meeting like uh, about two years ago in, in Munich. And I wanted to tell you about the first time we met. I thought that you are such an inspiring woman when you told me about your you're part of the committee and advisory board and and we talked about an hour uh, uh, um, a friend uh, matched us and we just met and sat together and then when we uh, said goodbye, you gave me a, a, your card. And then I looked at the card after you talked about what you're doing and we're creating this and we're doing this and everybody has his uh, like characteristics and, and strength. You, you remember you told me about the strength mm -hmm. of, of your co-founders and so forth. And then I saw on the card that you were the CEO. It's like the first time I met someone and I found out that he was the CEO in the end of the discussion <laughs> on the card. <laughs> I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> and it was so impressive to hear like we and, and like talking in plural because most CEOs that I talk with, they say I most of the time. So it was great to, to see that. So thank you for that. So <laughs> tell, tell us about yourself and about Inusabi. Um, sure. I, well, this time I can start with what you just mentioned. I'm the CEO. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and um, of the company in Osabi, actually, I'm, as you mentioned, we are four founders. Um, all four of us are in the managing board. And in my role as CEO, it's actually my job to, to represent the company, to kind of convey, to communicate our vision to the outside world. And in that way, to, to build a network of people who support us, um, who will kind of support us in achieving our mission. And um, of course, you know, that goes hand in hand with shaping our long-term strategy and and really building strategic partnerships. Um, from my background, I'm actually, I've, I would say, if you want to know who, who I am, sure. what I do, sure. it's, it's really um, all driven by an intense curiosity uh, for everything new. Um, yeah. So that's kind of the red line that goes through my CV. You know, it has led to quite a lot of time abroad. I've lived and worked in India and in Argentina and the U.S., um always kind of looking for for the new in terms of new friendships new culture new people new technologies new ideas and ultimately this curiosity really leads to founding a company and especially one that deals with innovation yeah um and so yeah, you could was, say you could say like curiosity is like the basic of an innovation if you're not curious you cannot be an innovation leader in any way like uh, you need that i i agree i agree it's the curiosity and also Kind of, I think the curiosity comes with a lack of fear of the new because if you're near, curious for right. the new, you know you, um, well you like it. So <laughs> that really um, goes, as you said, you know I think it's really important if you deal with innovation, if you want to really drive the future of innovation, that's kind of the the basic and it's a very core characteristic of mine. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, yeah, you you feel it when we talked. Like I felt that you're uh, enthusiastic about what you're doing, which is the most important thing, mm -hmm. I think. And could you tell us more about Inosabi and what what is what is it about? Sure, sure. So Inosabi um, is a provider for innovation management software for large corporations. So what that means is that we've basically we've seen that. In times of digital transformation, in times of digital competition, the strategy playbook is changing completely. Kind of the, the rules of how to be successful um, in times of digital um, are really kind of written in a new way. So it's really about collaboration. It's about openness. It's about connecting online and offline. It's about rather, it's about a constant urge to learn and to, um, to further develop. And it's about um, ecosystems. and. 
And seeing that, you know, we've seen that traditional innovation processes, especially in large corporations, very often still are kind of behind walled, yeah. uh, behind walls and very closed environments. And we we see the need to open this up to, you know, to to create new products and services in collaboration with the ecosystem of a company. So in sure. together with customers, with suppliers, with partners, university startups, um, own employees who were not involved before. So what we do is we, we provide the software to do exactly that. Um, so our software is basically a complete toolkit for all use cases and innovation. Could be internal crowdfunding, could be idea management, supply innovation. Um, and then what we do is once we've built individual use cases, we interconnect them all. Um, because we see, you know, that many companies today are actually at a stage where they have trialed and piloted many innovation methods and many digital strategies, yeah. and, right. and they kind of now now need to connect them and to make all that data accessible, to make the knowledge of the people accessible, to connect people, to truly create an ecosystem. And yeah, um, well, this is what we do with our software. Yeah, <laughs> so, sounds great. So if somebody sees us not in live, like afterwards, we're in the middle of the COVID crisis. Could you think what what is the effect of this crisis on innovation? What does leaders for innovation mm -hmm. face right now? Yeah, it, it truly is a unique time. Um, right. It's <laughs> not only yeah, it innovation, but in, in, in everything, every aspect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but when we think about change, mm -hmm. like this is the ultimate change. Like there yeah. was no change like this. And it's like a change which is so unexpected with so many unknowns and nobody knows the answer. So mm -hmm. collaboration, co-creation is like more important than ever as I see it. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Well, if we look at how... Um, Uh, innovation and crisis in in generally um, correlate or how good to go together what we see is that um, at the beginning of a crisis crisis many companies have a complete standstill in terms of innovation and in investment and in innovation because um, obviously there's a high uncertainty and and kind of um, they have to uh, collect themselves and see how things are going but um, but after this kind of first phase you know we see two different kind of, of behaviors we see the one that are completely cutting down on on all activities on all costs and kind of coming to a standstill and are really just kind of focusing on on staying alive um but then there's the other type of company that is to be honest, not not struggling less than the first example but they're having yeah. a different reaction and they say this is really um only in if we react now if we change if because you know you cannot change the environment you cannot change the conditions of the crisis yeah. the only thing right. that you can change is how you react to it and and these are the types of companies that um actually start investing in innovation and start um seeing um the change in their external world as an um as an opportunity for internal change as well and to right. kind of accelerate structural change and i think um That's something yeah. that we're not only seeing in companies, but in in our society in general. No? So many, yeah, yeah. I feel that so many topics are surfacing right now that were important before, and now are kind of getting uh, on a cut Yeah, I, I totally level, agree. No? Yeah, you know, like what you just said about the companies who are going and with with the change or resisting it, and they are both in the same uh, position. It's not like one mm -hmm. of them has more money or more uh, uh, sure about what's going to be. And um, so I'm writing a book and I thought about mm -hmm. calling it wind, building windmills because when the wind mm -hmm. of change is coming, you could either build walls or build windmills. And, oh, and I think, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's a good phrase, right? So, mm -hmm. And I thought about it a lot while I'm writing this book because I think that in some cases, walls are really important in order to protect your assets and, and do whatever mm -hmm. you can as long as you're using it in order to build something better for your future or something which is valuable for you in the future mm -hmm. of, of your, your market and the people who are building for. Mm -hmm. and, and when you think about building windmills, it's like harnessing these changes in order to do something better for your company, for your product, for your services. Mm -hmm. So it, mm -hmm. it really makes sense. Like what you said is like resonating with me. Yeah, and but it's sort of picking up on that. I think we actually... I'm always a big advocate, you know, for not seeing business and business decisions as something very isolated, but as, as something very human. And I think in this case, this is true more than ever, you know, like how we sure. respond to a crisis and if we use it to, um, to actually strive from it and to grow, or if it intimidates us and it kind of um, puts us in a very 
dark place that really yeah. um, is kind of part of the DNA, not and of characteristic not only of people but of companies as well. So right. now it really shows who has built an amazing team uh, um, company culture, who has you know kind of the resilience to come out of a crisis in a uh, in a strong way. Right. And um, so I really see lots of perils, you know, how we as humans deal with crisis as yeah. how we as businesses deal with crisis. Yeah, after all, uh, businesses are built from humans and from leaders mm -hmm. who lead these these companies and businesses. Mm -hmm. And and I think that you feel like, a, a, as like in general, when you see people around you, you see many of them just freeze and do nothing, although they they might lose their job, they might, sh something very big will, will change within their careers or their personal life, mm -hmm. and still they're, they prefer not to see it, you know, like go mm -hmm. watch Netflix and everything's mm -hmm. well. And you see some people just thinking about like all the time thinking, what could, what could I do better? How can I use this change in order to grow, mm -hmm. in order to do things different, better for me? Um, which is when, when there is unknown, as you say, it's, You, you, you have fear. Mm -hmm. So it's either curious or fear. You don't have both of them at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, because when you think about like all the world will change for sure. Everything will change. Like, Very true. Well, the way that we interact, the way businesses are, are acting in the world, the markets will change. So in, in one side, you could say, wow, it's, it's going to change. Like mm -hmm. what will be? Or on the other side, you could say, wow, it's going to change. Like... Mm -hmm. What can we do? Like, it's the same thing. It depends on where you see it. So as I see it, it's, it's a really good opportunity to grow from it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, coming back to the human side, um, I also mm -hmm. think, you know, it's kind of, it's not my place to say it's to condemn, you know, if people are afraid or if they don't no, see no. a chance because, you know, to there's a pandemic out there and it's a crisis and that we react with very, very deep emotions. I think that's sort of something very natural and very human. So the question really um, should be, you know, what can we do to um, also ask operations, you know, to, to overcome this fear and to see the chance, to see the positivity. And, um, and so, yeah, I think coming back, I, I think that has a lot to do with, with company culture and how also companies treat their people during times of crisis. You know, if they just right. see them as kind of a burden because it's, uh, they have to continue with the salaries and come kind of the, the employees feel that this is the case, then of course, you know, they will, um, not have the drive to work on innovation, to kind of work on right. the future of the company. If they don't feel that, you know, the company is actually value, valuing them and their ideas and, and who they right. are. So what would be the most powerful way to overcome these, these crises for, for companies? What would you say? Mm -hmm. Um, Well, I think there's actually one rather general answer and one that is specific to our times today. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, see, um, I'll start with the later one because it's a bit more concrete. Um, I see the, the last couple of months have really been pushing um, digital transformation um, initiatives and strategies. So even I've talked to some companies who, like airports, for example, who are really, I think, one of, you know, have suffered the most. And... Um, They're really saying um, this has been the most horrible time of them all. But the only good thing we see is that if we start again, you know, we can completely um, restart how we think about digital tools and digital structures and, and working together and like of how we organize our business processes, how we work as teams. And I think this is really one of the, um, the changes that helps us in the crisis today. You know, if we think mm -hmm. of How can we keep doing our business? How can we keep delivering value to our customers um, with different means? And, and digital tools obviously are kind of the, the choice today. Yeah, um, right. But if you talk about crisis in general and kind of looking um, bigger than, than where we are today, it yeah. is really um, transferring this, like how, how can we adapt processes? How can we adapt the way we work? How can we adapt in order to be kind of... Um, Yeah, more resilient than the competition, and yeah. um, and I actually see quite a, like a, I see a lot of value in in building ecosystems and in working in ecosystems. You know, not being kind of right. the lone 
how do you say the lone soldier lone ranger i think that's yeah <laughs> yeah yeah not but, fighting um, your own battles alone right? exactly exactly but teaming up you know with your suppliers with um, employees um who were not involved before with your customers and really say okay how can we battle this together how can we stay strong together how can we find solutions together and right. and this for me is um is one of the major success factors Yeah, of course. I think that in general, in, in when there are so many unknowns like we have right now, and in general, in crisis, there are lots of unknowns for, for companies. Yeah. And, and therefore, you need lots of point of views in order to gather the information and understand it in a holistic way. Because mm -hmm. if, if, if I'm a leader and I'm very, my organization is very hierarchical and I, I'm, I call the shots, I could be either wrong or, or not, like it depends. <laughs> But if we are a group or an, an ecosystem or a net of people, some of us will be more right, some of us will be maybe wrong, but together we can find a, a, a solution which is different mm -hmm. and maybe more resilient and maybe better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, actually you're uh, touching on a topic that's really, really important to me in terms of Um, I, I started this conversation with how the strategy rulebook is changing and how, right. and I think a huge part that is changing in that context is the leadership style that, um, that has to be lived in order to make innovation specifically successful. And, you know, when you mentioned as a leader, um, people have to say uh, this direction or that direction. I would think actually this is exactly what, what is changing, you know, that I always call it like a humble, I call it a humble leadership style. So yeah. um, it's not like yours. <laughs> I know. <Yeah. laughs> I know. Yeah. Um, that it's not the role of a leader to to make final decisions or to give final answers or to be the perfect business person, the perfect role model. But it's more yeah. the role of a leader to enable his or her team to kind of make them grow, to provide the path also for personal growth and to kind of be their best you know, cheerleader <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. and an enabler. And I think this is, you know, coming back to the ecosystem thought, you know, I think only with this thinking, you can also really um, make an innovation ecosystem successful. Yeah. Yeah. And, and innovation ecosystem demands that you have lower ego in a sense, because it's mm -hmm. not like my idea, I got the success, I got all the good feedback, I got all the in, uh, incentives. It's all mine. Like it's mine. Exactly. It's, like, it's, it's more about the we and what can we do. And I think that in general, like when we see this crisis, you see people are understanding that we are all connected, right? So mm -hmm. as, as people, as, as countries and as companies, it doesn't matter. We are all influencing, influencing each other, which is very obvious for us. Mm -hmm. um, so could you give me like a use case of, of a client that you help with your tool like to do a better innovation in their company? Um, sure, sure. Actually, I was thinking, um, let me share some information first of how um, companies have tackled the crisis. Um, and sure. after one, maybe a little bit bigger, that kind of gives the big picture. Sure, sure. Um, so we've seen companies, um, for example, um, using um, our innovation software to say, We are um, an industrial medical, um, sorry, <laughs> mechanical. I'm completely in the COVID uh, thinking. COVID, we are, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are a mechanical industry, um, industry. And uh, what can we do to use our existing parts that are not approved yet for medical purposes to build emergency respirators and to build emergency equipment? So they said we want, they want to specifically use um, parts that were not in this context before in order not to kind of take away important parts from their customers, you know, because they have customers who use the parts for own medical equipment and they say it doesn't make sense if we use that as well. Can we not use other parts that maybe were used in, in automobiles before or in, in airplanes, you know, to, to build um, emergency equipment? Or another um, company that's, you know, has some rather public places, they said, lots of large buildings, they said, how can we improve ventilation so that um, potentially, you know, the virus doesn't spread as much? And they were asking um, this, um, you know, in a very open way and kind of to trigger an open discussion um, amongst all there in, in the ecosystem. Um, and, la and, and lastly, in terms of the how to tackle the crisis, um, actually, I really um, love um, the challenge, which is called a Give a Breath Challenge, which was initiated by Munich Re and uh, Fraunhofer, where they had an open call towards the whole world 
to build um, emergency um, respirator equipment, um, which could be 3D printed, you know, with the mm -hmm. idea that hopefully we'll, we'll never get to a place, you know, that um, our medical um, system will not have the capabilities anymore. Right. But in case we will reach that point, you know, the ultimate um, worst scenario, worst case scenario, um, they said we want to be prepared and we want to have the concepts, you know, ready to 3D print. And um, and that was a huge success, you know, with really? submission from all how many How many people took part in that? It was actually, um, it's a huge initiative with um, quite a lot of companies also pitching in, providing expert knowledge, um, providing, um, so it's not only the participants live on the platform, but also, you know, the mm -hmm. whole network involved. So I'd say all over all, it was a couple of thousand actually who were kind of reached and participated. Obviously, the people who actually teamed who, um, who submitted were, uh, were less. But it had yeah. quite an amazing reach and, and this amazing, you know, passion of people um, wanting to contribute. Yeah, yeah I, I, I do, you know, like doing things together, it, it really makes sense. I think that we're built to do things together as human beings, although mm -hmm. we're, we live in society that people are most of the time like doing things alone or as part of a team and then again alone in front of a screen in, in many mm -hmm. cases. But it, it looks so natural when, when people are... Um, they have a problem together and they want to solve it together. It's just, just to collaborate and think about how can we do it together better? And, and, mm -hmm. and when, when you're doing, you're not that worried and you're not so afraid, you're not alone and, and you can contribute what you, your skills, your talents, your knowledge, whatever, you know, to solve yeah. what you're doing. And, and you see many initiatives like that in COVID, like I, do, I mm -hmm. took part in some hackathons, for example, yes. in order to create yeah. things and, which yeah. is it, it makes you feel like you're doing something good like exactly and and it's like without any benefits it, there is a benefit because you're happy to do something good right to contribute yeah yeah to do but, your part to do your part and actually um you know this contributing and being open and seeking um seeking knowledge in an ecosystem um that leads to um the last but broader example um so for example for um, Siemens, we are, we've built a platform which is called the Siemens Innovation Ecosystem. And it kind of stems from the um, observation that um, Siemens is such a large organization that they have literally hundreds of individual initiatives for innovation and digital strategy throughout the company, which is a good thing because obviously you want every team member and every, um, every part of the organization to think about the future of the company and to drive innovation sure. projects. But um, what ha what also happens is, you know, that they are so, let's say, advanced in their strategy that they needed a point to to interconnect these initiatives, to interconnect the people, the data sources, um, and ideas. So what we've done is kind of we we built an aggregator um, with our software where you can access the individual initiatives. Um, but let's say, for example, um, they also using our software built an amazing crowdfunding approach, which is called the Siemens uh, Quick Starter. So teams can submit ideas and then the the funds um, the budget will not only be distributed by very few people in top management but by by their colleagues oh and, that's um, great yes it's it's great uh, yeah quite successful as well also in terms of um, defining culture and so um of these types of initiatives there were quite many so we've built an aggregator where for example with a um, global search or with an um, innovation assistant you can say, okay, this is my, um, this is the challenge I have. This is the idea I have. Um, where do I find resources? Where do I find uh, people, ideas, initiatives, um, articles, events um, that help me to solve that pro challenge or to to drive forward an idea? Yeah, and um, yeah, this is actually and, quite quite big. <laughs> yeah, it is. You know, like mm -hmm. it seems like big companies are doing so much in order to innovate because. First, they, they are aware that they need to do it in order to compete. But it's mm -hmm. not only that, it's the fact that they have so many people and so many ideas and so many initiatives and they need to manage it in a sense, yeah. like to, exactly. to prioritize it and to understand what has value. Maybe in some yeah. cases, maybe it will be like several different solutions for the same problem going from different uh, places in the world or so forth. Yeah. Exactly. But I, I think it's it's important for smaller companies too, you know, to, to really understand how to um, take the best ideas and to grow them and how to collaborate better. Um, 
like open innovation and doing things together is something that when you're a very small company, it's really easy because mm-hmm. everybody knows everyone. But when you're starting to grow, it's it's much harder in many cases, like they are building like innovation hubs and so forth, mm-hmm. which is a bit uh, distant from the main uh, offices or it's like they're, they're in a different way of thinking, like uh, they are the creative people. We're mm-hmm. like doing the work. And mm-hmm. it's hard to make everyone inno- innovate because in really innovative companies, they don't have someone which is, I'm, I'm doing the innovation, you're doing all the, the rest. It's like mm-hmm. everybody's doing the innovation, right? Exactly, and, exactly. And it, it's really like, it's important to understand that innovation is not like a, a role for a certain person that I'm doing, that's what I'm doing in the company, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. is which is something that, you know, like uh, most of my clients are from Israel and, and mm-hmm. some of them are from Europe and, and the US, but most of them are close, close to me. And Israel is very young and the companies are very young. We have like tons of startups and and, and you see when they grow and grow and we, we don't have that many, like in, in Munich and in Germany, you have very big established companies mm-hmm. for for hundreds of years, maybe. We don't have, we are, we're so young, so we don't have it. Mm-hmm. But you see that when it starts with the small group, it works really well. And when it grows, it starts to, you know, it's, it's, you cannot manage it anymore. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and it's like we started, let's say, as a, as a startup and it worked well. And when it went, it came to hundreds of people, you don't have the entrepreneurship way of, of doing things. So they need the tools in order to manage mm-hmm. that, I guess. Yeah. So, so tell me something. What what is like the most surprising thing you learned about innovation from your experience with with Inosabi? Like, what surprised you? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, well, I wouldn't actually. I would say it's something I've learned, which is more of a confirmation of what I felt before. It was not like a real like, surprise that I thought differently mm-hmm. before, um, yeah. but it's. More that, you know, as we said, you know, innovation and ecosystem only works if you have a kind of the view of a person of like everybody can have a good idea and should be heard for it. You know, it's not only the person who has a specific job description who is allowed to have a good idea. But right. in, in order to um, to to really make this successful, you know, you, you need to to value every single person for who they are and what they can bring to the table and really to say, well, we say connect the dots, you know, you need to find the people, bring them together instead of thinking that you're kind of the almighty doing everything yourself and knowing everything yourself, you know. And um, which is, well, as I said, you know, it's kind of a core belief I have, but it, so it's not really a surprise that it is that way, but what I just like seeing is that lots of companies are starting you know, coming from this really harsh business environment and they started kind of changing their the way they do business in order to keep up in today's world because, um, and that's very positive um, development that I see. Um, but what we've always have to keep in mind, you know, maybe, I don't know, the last half hour, you know, we've been talking about quite lots of um, concepts that, that are very, that might seem a bit, I don't know, soft, you know, like how do you behave as a human being? How do you accompany culture? How do you see um, humans in, in, in terms of how to drive innovation? But, um, and that might be the surprise for people who are listening, <laughs> um, not for us, but for people who are listening is that companies who, who start driving innovation in that way actually see very hard um, and measurable um, ROIs as well. You know, they see return sure. on the best. So we've seen some cases, for example, um, a faster time to market by seven months, which is 30% faster than than for, for the other products. And you can imagine, you know, what that really means in terms of sure. more revenue, profit. We've seen um, six times higher innovation activity than, uh, than before. We've seen um, multiple times higher um, participation rates, um, um, more successful products. So it's kind of really always depends on the use case, how you measure it. But yeah. Um, but this is really, um, yeah, might be the surprise to the people listening, you know, that we're talking mm-hmm. basically about how 
how our view on on humans and a company culture but in reality it really drives business business results yeah i i think that most people know that the most uh, successful companies are somewhat creative and somewhat innovative but they don't mm-hmm. know that the ones who are most most innovative as the one that are most creative like mm-hmm. everybody knows like amazon is is always creating more and more values and more and more services and products they know that but mm-hmm. they don't say like this is processes of innovation that is done again and again and many of the things you you see it's like the only like that's the only result that you see but mm-hmm. there were like thousands of ideas they tested before you saw Amazon Prime for example exactly like, exactly like yeah. get, people think that okay they have the teams and they decided to open a new team which is called Amazon Prime and it yeah, happened like, by itself <laughs> yeah and then it happened right so mm-hmm. they they don't see the hard work of like i think that many cases when you think about innovation it's either very technical like digital transformation or a creative stuff like being mm-hmm. very creative but it's it's actually the way you work and the way you act in the world and the way that it's your daily life mm-hmm. trying to think about things uh, differently and maybe solve things differently and maybe think about How can we create something better or a better thing? So it yeah. doesn't matter. Yeah. Like it's doing it all the time. Yeah. So what, what would be like the main things that an innovation leader needs to know in this context? What do they need? Um, well, I think we've touched on many points, you know. So mm-hmm. what I would really strengthen and emphasize is to, um, that an innovation leader needs to enable his or her team to to build this ecosystem and to connect and to really mm-hmm. um, see where are solutions how can we bring people together and how can we join forces and doing though in a smart and digital way you know because that's yeah. the way to do things today and and also apart from the crisis you know innovation is so much about really kind of finding the inspiration finding the idea finding data and people and knowledge and and what better way to do that than digitally you know if, if kind of read of you Um, ideally and that's what our software also does is using artificial intelligence to 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 understand data to understand you know where's the knowledge that I need and to find it so um, this is really what I think innovation leaders should should pay special attention to today um, and also they shouldn't be you know if most probably the top management are saying um, we have to cut budgets you know we we don't right. have budget for innovation anymore and So um, my advice in that context would be to to kind of also go back to to kind of the very core of innovation that you you know innovation happens also without budget you know frugal innovation or especially in times of hardship when you have to think in different ways so I think now is kind of the way to to um, still believe in In innovation and to drive it even though you might not have the millions anymore to yeah uh, that you had before <laughs> yeah I think it, it, it's a way of thinking innovatively about what's innovation for us does it mean that we have to invest so much money and so much uh, something which is like doing in it doing it in a different way and finding your best way in order to innovate but mm-hmm. still you As like it really makes sense as the world is changing, you need to change. And the mm-hmm. only way you can do that is not like, as we said, not like building walls and going back to your core value or your core business. It's like, yeah, you stabilizing yourself and then you want to do things um, when you're seeing the future. What is will to be the next normal? How can mm-hmm. our products, our services go and meet the needs that are in new needs? unmet needs out there mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. And, and it's and you know innovation is 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 hard after all it's not like it's not like yeah we're betting on it and it's like 100 successful most of the cases it's not and you mm-hmm. still need to do it you know to get this very one single idea which is like is changing the game and make making you more competitive Yeah, yeah yeah there's an amazing article I think by Harvard Business Review um, which is called which deals with um, innovative cultures you know and it kind of says that we have this wrong image in our mind that innovative cultures are the ones you know where you have foosball tables and free food and kind of people are just lounging yeah. around and, and having yeah. fun like the Google offices with all the colors <laughs> and they have a slide right exactly that's kind of the image we have in our head you know but yeah. um, which is obviously it's you know you 
good if employees feel well, but um, well, they've made a study and seen that, have seen that um, the companies that actually perform very well um, in innovation, and, and that could, by the way, still be um, the Google office, <laughs> um, are extremely competitive and extremely like, hardworking um, environments. Um, because they say what really drives innovation, if people are like feeling secure in a way that um, they are they are able to go to the boundaries of what they know and and what they can do, and kind of just to, to cross that boundary and to make new experiences and see what's there. So um, and then you know, but not well. This obviously touches on failure culture, but it's like they say it's, and I totally agree. Um, a failure is not like as such is not a good thing. It's only a good thing if it happened not because you were tired or you didn't want to, but if it happened because you went to something that you didn't know before and you tried something new. And then also if you go back to the organization and learn from it and share that experience. And these types of cultures are um, actually very often very performance driven and, and very like hard working cultures, as you said. You know, innovation is hard work. Um, so um, I think we shouldn't. Um, underestimate that you know and be ready for the hard work and to say okay this um it's worth it in the end you know yeah it, it does it is worth it so it's it's a great way to to summarize our talk like it's worth doing innovation and even if it's hard work and and although you fail because when you do something new you fail it doesn't mean that it's not the way you just need to go on and, and continue to create more and more and learn mm -hmm. from your failures so mm -hmm. that's all you need to do Okay, so I want to thank you very much. If anybody has another question, wants to reach out to you, what, where, where could they find you? Well, um, basically on every every social media site that's out there, you can find me. Probably mm -hmm. the easiest is to go on LinkedIn, and drop me a message there. I'd be super happy to connect and to to continue the conversation. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's it's been such a pleasure. I really enjoyed talking to you, and thank you very much for uh, joining me for this talk, and everyone. <laughs> Yes, thank you for being with us and have a great day. So don't forget to come back to Invincible Innovation and, and see our, our talks here. Thanks, Katerina. Have a great day. Thank you so much for inviting me. Have a great day too. Bye-bye. 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 Yeah. I'm Adima Zaukario, and you've been listening to the Invincible Innovation Podcast make sure to visit our website, invincibleinnovation.com, where you can learn more about our programs and my book, Innovating Through Chaos. I'll be waiting for you next week in our next episode. Thank you for listening.